All right, all right. Beanie Talks with Friends, episode 110. We're in a special place, Town Hall, room 326. This is great. How are you guys doing? We are doing great, Eric. Thank I you. I also am doing great, Eric. Thank you. Yeah, two guys and a lot of wine. I can't two, wait. Two guys and a lot of wine with friends with feet. Yes. That's, couldn't ask for more than that. Two, two pods. This is the first time we've done two pods. It's like two pods and a pee, right? Two, it, pod two pods and a pee. <laughs> or, or two crazy. wine guys and a pee. Right. Yeah. Uh, that, yes. Very exciting. Very exciting. Special collaborative uh, episode. Uh, my name is Eric Feeney, founder and president of Friends of Feeney. Our mission is to help children and families that need assistance after heartbreak or tragedy. I use this podcast, Feeney Talks with Friends, and I talk to wonderful people in the community that are doing great things. And we're here with Bobby P. and Rocky, and you guys do great things. You've been on the air for 13 years. 13, almost 14 years, I think. I always forget. I think we started in 11. Um, I had a, another co-host before Rocky joined me, and uh, he moved to the Boston area with his, his wife. And Rocky's been with us now for what, six years? Uh, started in 16, so do the math there. Almost, no, 17, so yeah. seven years, yeah. Yep, and uh, I will say that both Rocky and Jim, my former co hosts are what you would call the wine experts. I have always referred to myself as the Regis Philbin of the wine show, which I tried to have levity and uh, fun in regards to drinking wine, so without getting too technical. Yeah. Well, I can't thank you enough. I'm so excited to be here. Um, again, we're on episode 110. Uh, my past got podcast was filmed at Maximum Beverage. You ever go over there? Oh, yeah. That Maximum Beverage, I think we've been there. I was there a few days ago. Yes. Check <laughs> that out, 109 <laughs> with all lines. And then another special one, 108 with uh, the Honorable Dr. Miguel Cardona, our Secretary of Education. So go back and check out those podcasts. Uh, but I'm very excited to be here. Uh, we have some sponsors. We have Brooke Goff, uh, Keating Agency, Luna Pizza, The Fix IV, Donut Crazy, People's Bank, Parkville Market, West Hartford Lock. So we're now with <laughs> West Hartford Lock. What are three keys that make you great at hosting two guys and a lot of wine? Three keys. Oh, God. Uh, the love of wine. That's one. I mean, you got to love what you're talking about. I'll go with that one first. Rocky? I think that we just, we like to have fun talking about it and, and, I think that mine does not have to be this pretentious thing that a lot of people think that it is. And that's what we do with our show is just let's have fun talking about wine. And I think part of the fun is that you don't know if it's going to be good or if it's bad and how you're going to react when it does. But it's just it's always fun. and It always goes by really fast. Too. And the third third one, I think, is price point. I think, uh, you know, Rock and I both know there are plenty of wine shows where they talk about very expensive wines. And when I started this show 13 odd years ago, I the original goal was to keep the wines between eight to fifteen dollars now we upped up a little bit but in general like i think most of our wines generally fall into that price mm -hmm. point eight yeah. to fifteen or sixteen dollars though as we become more seasoned vets uh, the price point has been going up over the last couple of years but we still keep it affordable so i think those three points are very important for the average person when it comes to wine because they don't want to break the bank on stuff they don't know if they're going to like yeah no that's great you guys always look like you're having a great time uh speaking of maximum beverage matt whitney he owns it he said don't let don't wait for an occasion for the bottle, make the bottle the occasion. Have you guys ever said that? Yeah, well, Matt's been on the show a few times. Yeah, right? yeah he's, Matt's been on a few times. I, I haven't heard that one yet, but that's You can use good. that one. We can use that. Can, <laughs> Matt, are you writing this down, Bobby? I don't have any paper in front of me. So, oh, I do, but I, I, you that's on my pen. pen. I left my pen over He's been on the most of your podcast. You said he's the, what? You just mentioned that earlier. Uh, Chris Williams, I think, is the Alec Baldwin, though I should know use Alec Baldwin's name right now with all his problems, but he is the Alec Baldwin of the show. Because he's been on the most, and I think Essie's a close second. Essie's been on several times, manager. yeah. She comes on every year. Do, well, Matt Whitney's sure. my Alec Baldwin. Oh! Yeah. Matt Whitney's been on episode 1630, 67, and 109. Alec Baldwin, Matt Whitney. Let, let's just say, I know it's a secret, but this might be from our good friend. That, that's okay. Over here. So, uh, just, uh, I don't think that really narrows it down to, what, a few thousand wines. That's a hard guy to get on the show, though, isn't he? He's always busy. Yeah. You guys drink whiskey? Do you guys also do whiskey? I do not. We actually did a, he, We did the whiskey show on the, when he was here okay. the, one of the times. I don't think he were, were you on the whiskey He came show? on to promote the whiskey festival That's one right. year, and I, at the last minute, was not able to make it. So it was still two guys and a lot of whiskey. But and he, I, I tried it. I, don't get me wrong. I, I used to be a beer drinker about 20-some-odd years ago, and uh, my ex was French, and she said, Bobby, you're drinking beer way too much. So she got me to switch to wine, and I've never looked back. I mean, I still like the occasional beer, but um, I think wine is a very good choice for somebody who just wants to drink a little on the slower pace and uh, just just savor the flavor a little bit more than chugging mm -hmm. a beer. I, I, I totally agree. I'm a, I'm a scotch guy. I like single malt scotch. 
Uh, Macallan 12 is my go-to. I forgot so. See, I don't, yeah, I don't care for uh, the hard stuff. Yeah, I don't, I don't drink it every day. I, I, I usually stick with wine, especially during the hot months, but uh, I'll occasionally enjoy a good whiskey, yes. Very we'll save the date. October 4th is the next Whiskey Fest. Whiskey Fest. That is second okay. Right. Do I know this? Because Friends of Feeney is the beneficiary of the event for the third oh, year nice. in a row. Maybe fourth year in a row. So thank you, Matt, and all of our friends at Maximum Beverage. Uh, what inspired you to get this podcast started? Well, I've answered this question, but never actually answered the question on this show. Uh, I would probably say about 14 years ago, my neighbor, uh, Steve Adler, was a former town councilman. We were always having wine parties in the backyard at the house. And my house is usually open for friends in, in the neighborhood. And he came over one time and he says, you know, Bobby, you do these wine parties all the time. Why don't you go to WHC-TV and do a show on wine? And I remember, I remember it like clear as day, and I, I looked at him and I said, I can go on TV and drink wine and talk about it? And the rest really has been history. I came down, Jen Evans was here. Back in those days, Jatu Huntley was um, a producer, a director here also. And uh, boy, they were great. They really, uh, I had never done anything on TV before. My co-host, Jim Smith, had. He had done some broadcasting work. But uh, I just fell in love with it, just to be able to go on TV and talk about the wine at that price point that I thought was reasonable. It was just a, a great experience, and that's really how it started. So cool. All right, we're going to play another game. Are you ready? Yes. So it's called First, Last, Best, Worst. We're going to do two guys on a lot of wine podcast episodes. Your first one, your last one, your best one, and your worst one. Any order. Totally up to you. Are you guys thinking of the oh, I, I know, I know, For me, I know what the, the one I'm going to pick because I think it's kind of hysterical. It's a little older, but you want to go first in this one or want me to go first? Well, uh, I, well, my first one I remember because I was actually on with Matt Whitney and it was because Jim was not able to make it at the last minute and you said, do you, do you know of anybody else that would want just to kind of round out the bunch? And we had a Merlot show and that was uh, 2017. Uh, that was in February of 2017, so quite some time ago. So that was my first. First episode, yeah. 2017. Very nice. And Matt Whitney was involved again. Yes, <laughs> his name is coming out like left and right here. That's hysterical. But. And I have to say, because I've been doing this long, my first episode is the most memorable. And I know uh, when Jim and I were doing it, we said, what are we, what's going to separate us when we're doing this show? And at the time, Two and a Half Men was still on. And remember, Charlie Sheen had those shirts on. Those I don't know what they were called. They had that stripe on the side. There was a name for those shirts. Like a bowling shirt? Yeah, it's something like a bowling shirt. Sort of a retro, like a Kramer-type shirt from yeah. Seinfeld. So we had matching shirts on. And we were standing up back then at the studio. And I remember the introduction. And I said, uh, thank you for joining this uh, special occasion. There was two guys and a lot of wine. And uh, I went into the intro kind of clumsily. And then I said, you know, when Jim and I host our wine parties, and it didn't dawn on me at first when I said that, and I, I think for the first probably six shows, people probably thought me and Jim were married. And it, it was hysterical because our wives were watching the show, and, and do they know what they just saw? Not that there's anything wrong with that, but it was just hysterical, and I just always thought it was funny. If you look at the old shows from 2011, you see Jim and I matched exactly alike, and always saying um, when we host our wine parties, it just is pretty freaking funny. I love it. First, last, best, worst. Which one have we touched on? Oh, uh, let's see. So that was the first, and what are we on mm. to next, you said? Up, totally up to you. Best, worst. Well, 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 know about hey, that. Uh, that okay, this just made choices. Stay safe, everybody. Yes, Can I if, stop that? If yeah. something flies through the building, this will officially That's go right. first. Oh, we're going <laughs> go on. Actually, we'll go viral. We're going to go ahead and... It will go viral. Yeah. How come yours didn't beep? I turned mine off, I think. Or is it yeah, still going to be off? Yeah. Uh, oops. Mm -hmm. Sorry yeah, those that. are going off a couple of days, I guess. Um, for me, uh, let's see, the worst show would probably be when I brought in, and I don't know if you're here, Rocky, the Russian Champagne. And I've done the Russian Champagne twice. And the first time I did it, I think Jim was here. Were you here? And I opened up the bottle. It was from Russia, some part of Russia. It was supposedly Stalin's favorite bubble. And I got to say, I opened it up and tasted it, and I now realize why Russians probably die early, because it was <laughs> horrific. <laughs> there were hardly any bubbles. I felt embarrassed with bringing the wine, and I'll never forget it, but I did bring it one more time. And I don't know if you remember that, Rocky, because I think you were part of that when I brought it again. Do you? I, I, I vaguely remember this. Man, that's my phone going off. Now and I thought I turned it off. Russian champagne. <laughs> but, oh, there you go. But it... When I brought it for the second time, and I thought I brought you on the show, I thought, okay, it can't possibly be as bad as the first time. It was just maybe a bad bottle. No, it was just as bad. So that Russian champagne, if you see it in the stores, and they do have it locally, you'll know it. 
It's Russian. It's got Russian red ant. Do not buy it. It is awful. I'm going to have to go, and this has nothing to do with the guest because she's one of my favorite guests. This was when the pandemic hit, and we shot one from my dining room, and it was just logistically, it was such a disaster because I was trying to keep the wine cold in like a, is that Kaylin? a cooler. Kaylin was the guest, and Kaylin, if you're listening, this has nothing to do with you. It's just totally about how uh, it was just, I remember I had an ice cooler on the floor. I was trying to keep the wine cold, and then I was bringing it up on the table, and it was like dripping everywhere, and the cameras might, I don't have a huge dining room, and so I'm like, the cameras are, am I going to look like I'm in a fishbowl effect here? <laughs> we had no idea what the sound was going to be, but we were just flying by the seat of our pants because we couldn't shoot in studio, and this was, you know, 20 2020 i think the episode ended up being okay but i'll have to say as far as the shooting goes that was incredibly frustrating i can see that that was tough filming those zoom ones yeah, that was, on uh, the change of location oh it was zoom yeah. too it was uh was it done uh via zoom or did they bring the cameras in i don't even remember nope, i think they set up good. a camera across. they did set up a camera yeah they set they up a set camera up. in my yep. in my dining room and uh it was just it was it was very difficult but Kaylin, so Kaylin, Kaylin did a great job with so it i guess so all right, so that was our best and first. Was there another one that you guessed? Worst, last. That was your worst at the house. Yeah, that was probably my your worst. last, most recent. Uh, the most recent was um, uh, Doug okay. from uh, Missing Hidden Link. Uh, Missing Link. Yep, Mr. who was actually Doug Rankin. Ship. Doug Rankin. Yeah, he was a, he was a great guest too. And Doug had some fantastic wines. Yeah. Fantastic wines. Missing Link Wine Company. Yes. They are. Uh, they have. They have a lot of artisanal stuff, a lot of organic, and they're they're really into like the winemaking process and bringing he wines that are in chocolate. In, or he brought some he chocolate. Did he did the pour behind his back. He did that not do that, that, but he did. He did, did the. Uh, he did the, the the liquor bottle on top where you where you pour it from way up high. Yeah. I, oh, yeah. I am. Uh, but yeah, I well, love that chocolate. That adds flavor. It does. It, it really it it's, it's uh, aerated. It. Gets every gets everything bubbling going through there. So that was our there, last year. Uh, we have a wine tasting fundraiser with Doug Rankin coming up too. It's going to be at New Park Brewery. Uh, TBD right now. So, oh, okay. We'll have to keep that in please, check. Okay. Please attend. Yeah. We would love to have you. Doug Rankin, episode, I wrote it down, 44. Very good. Doug Rankin, he's the man. I really like him a lot. He's a great guy. And like I said, I know he knows his wine just like Rocky does. And the stuff he brought in was really good. And they're doing some really good stuff on Instagram now. You see the, the videos are, they're adding uh, entertainment, humor. It's a little more engaging. I don't know. I don't know who's writing that stuff for you, Doug, but you're, you're even more funny than you have been. <laughs> he did say he had a new person, a younger person that's in charge of the uh, marketing or advertising. Ah, okay. So, uh, it shows. Yeah. Again, Doug, you've always been funny. He's a good guy. So what, the best, what's your favorite? Best, worst. Oh, oh the best. best. I'm really sure yeah, yeah, that. that. You know, that, that's, uh, me and my wife have this argument all the time, like, what's your best this? I, I, me and my mind's not geared towards that, but the best category of shows we do, I think will have to be the holiday shows. When we do the mm, bubble the show, because I like no, dressing up a tuxedo, no, we've been doing the bubble show every year for the last thirteen years, and I think it's just fun. Mm -hmm. uh, I love bubbles, whether it's champagne or just sparkling. I love the dressing up aspect of it. I love the formality of it. So anytime we get to do a bubble show, I think uh, is what I would say is my favorite. And, and Essie LeBeau, our former town clerk, has been on I think what three or four in a row now for that. That she's become yeah. a regular on that. And she, she was always, a regular on that one. She always makes it fun. She'll bring parlor tricks like pop rocks and different things pop that create bubbles, like a sparkling yeah. and colored bubbles effect. And pop and rocks in the champagne. Putting pop yeah, rocks in really the champagne. Great. Yeah, we did that one time. Adds flavor and, uh, too, and the pop. Yeah. And the little gold sprinkle dust that she puts in now yep. that that is edible. It oh, sort okay. of has a little shimmer to it. Um, so yeah, I think the champagne shows that we do on the holidays are probably my favorite. Wow. I'd have to say the one we did in your backyard that was our, I believe it was our anniversary show. Yeah, that, that was, was a lot of fun too. because we had some uh, super, that was probably the highest end wines that we yeah, had. Yeah, we had wildlife was, running through just. It was crazy. Out of, out of the rabbits dart and here and there. That was pretty The rabbits good. made it into the final cut of the show. But, that's uh, that was, that was, so geographic. That was yeah. pretty good too. Yeah. You're right, Rocky. That was a good yeah. one. But that's why it's so difficult to pick the, the best of anything. And I think even you, Eric, you've done so many shows and you probably have a few favorite. But after a while, they just, you have a category. And you have a, a, a vision of what was fun, but it's hard to just say one is your favorite. Yeah, I totally, I get that. Well, I've been a teacher for 20 years. I taught at Kingsbury School where I went to school as a kid. I taught at Woke Elementary School where my daughters attended. Uh, I was a finalist for Teacher of the Year two years ago. Uh, I'm just honored. Mrs. Jarrell was my fifth grade teacher. She changed my life. That just helped me lead and get my path into being a teacher. I try to be someone's Mrs. Jarrell. Uh, do you have a favorite teacher? Oh, that's, I know you had that one of the questions <laughs> that you're going to ask. Prep time for this. Yeah. Did you do your homework? It's not so much homework, it's memory. 
Yeah. And uh, I always did like school. I was always a person that liked learning outside of the curve in class. So I tended to want to read about things that they weren't being taught. So Mr. Kinsella, probably when I was in 11th grade, I'm not going to go back any farther than that because it's really stuck. He was big into history. And he said, Bob, as long as you know your history and as long as you understand history, you'll always know what's going on in the world. And I, I really grasp that. I, I'm just a history person. I, history of the world, history of our country, history of the other states, other, or, I'm sorry, other countries. Stay on top of things. If you stay on top of things, what's going on in the world, you'll always look at world a little bit more better instead of being ignorant and not knowing what's going on. So, Mr. Kinsella, thank you. Um, so, mine is an interesting story. Um, I thought about this, and, and, and it hit me. It didn't, never really occurred to me that this was the case, but my favorite teacher was someone named Miss Murphy. She was an English teacher, and she was known for being the hardest, most difficult teacher in the English department. Nobody wanted her. So freshman year, who do I get? I get Miss Murphy, right? And I'm like, oh. And so get through the class. Now, it, it rarely happens where your sophomore year you'll end up getting the same teacher, rarely. But it just somehow it can get shuffled around the classes, the teachers. Sophomore year, Miss Murphy again, right? And so it's... I end up in her class and I'm just like, ah, oh, you know, and so we're going through sophomore year and then it has never happened, I think, in the history of the school that someone got it three years in a row, right? Junior year here, it's what happened. I get Miss Murphy, right? So by this time, we've just had so much face, they don't want you to have the same teacher three years in a row. That's we've true. had so much face exposure and uh, we're, we're just like bickering like an old married couple. And so we land in front of the guidance counselor in the school. Now the guidance counselor just happened to live two doors down from me and had a son my age. We were like, I've been on vacation. Like I, I was very familiar with the guidance counselor. So I'm sitting there and the guidance counselor is looking at us and she's like, we're just like, I don't want to be in her class anymore. And she's like, yeah, I don't want him in my class. It was just the most ridiculous thing ever. Like we had just been like together for too long. Like, yeah, yeah. We're like, <laughs> and the guidance counselor looks at me and she goes, Rocky, I think that you should just stick it out. She goes, just, if, if you want to stick it out for a little while longer, and if you want to come back, if it's not working, uh, come back and I'll, I'll put you in another class. And I'm like, okay. And so the funniest thing happened is that we both became like, from that moment on, it's like we just needed to kind of have it out a little bit. And we both became really good friends. She was like, if I passed her in the hallway, I'd say hello and we'd talk, that kind of thing. That's pretty so, good. Was this Tennessee? And I'll tell you this much. This was in Tennessee, yeah, Knoxville, Tennessee. I'll tell you this much. To this day, when I see like someone use there, there, and there incorrectly, I, I immediately think of her because I don't make those kind of grammatical errors, and it's all thanks to her, her because she was very difficult, but she really cared about what she did and made sure that people didn't make those mistakes. So I'll have to say that she was my favorite. At one point, probably my least favorite teacher, but when it was all said and done, probably my favorite teacher. Yeah. Interesting. I love it. Yeah. That's so cool. Great story, too. That is a good story. Three years in a row was only I during COVID I taught second grade and then the following year I taught third grade and five students got to loop it's called loop with me so it was cool to have five students to do to have me for second grade and third grade mm. very similar I was not miss someone's miss Murphy but <laughs> so no it's great and then this doesn't have to be West Hartford but your favorite restaurant and then there's a follow-up question wow that's a tough one. one so many choices I'll stick to Connecticut only because it's only fair um, once again, I'm a. This is going to be controversial. I tend to go outside of West Hartford a lot for dinner because I love them BY, BYOB places, and especially when you know the cost of wine. It's tough for somebody like me to grasp a three or four times over price. But food wise, I'm going to probably say for the best Italian food would be Bon Appetito. In, uh, Avon. Okay. Um, Never heard that one. It's probably some of the best Italian food you're going to find. Freshly made, freshly cooked. And I reckon we've been there a few times mm -hmm. together. Yep. You can't really go wrong. The prices are reasonable. It's got a very New Yorkish atmosphere. It's very tight inside, so people tend to sit together and closer because the tables are closer. I love that because I like talking to my neighbor. Of course, if they don't want to talk, I get it too. I just like the closeness of it, and the food is always delicious. And is it a BYOB place? It is a BYOB place, yeah. Mine would be probably a, a very close between Fleming and Max's Oyster Bar. I'm going to give Max's Oyster Bar a slight edge because I love raw oysters. Uh, so, yeah, that's if if I had a if I won the lottery, I'd be eating there a lot more. You know, it's not cheap to eat there, but I love going to that place. It's it's got to be my then, my go-to. Before I get to my follow-up question, can you list your top five BYOB restaurants for our listeners? 
Yeah, I think have we ever covered that before? That's a great question, Eric. I don't know if we ever covered this. I need to know. I'm right down. Places. We talked to Zaytun, Zaytun does yeah. it. Zaytun's, of course, yep. yep. Uh, Bon Appetito. Then we have the Elephant Trail, which is in Avon, the original one. Uh, the one in West Harvard obviously has a liquor license and they sell. Um, what's the other place that we go to? Uh, uh, Nami, I think on New Britain Ave might be BYOB. Oh, y yes, and also Lola's in Plainville, another fantastic oh, that little good. gem. Uh, Lola's Can we say Hot Heaven Pizza? We've actually filmed the show there. And we did film at Hot Lola's? Heaven Pizza. Lola's in Plainville. They've been around for decades. And Hot Heaven Pizza, also in, uh, in Avon. Um, great pizza, great food, and BYOB. And a very quaint little atmosphere inside. BYOB. Write these down, people. Write they're... them down. They're all good. You will not be disappointed. Now, pros and cons of BYOBs, and uh, obviously price is number one. And I guess... You could drink You want to take that one? You want me to go? Silly question. Yeah. I mean, there's are pros and cons. Okay. For me, it's that I know my wines and I know what pairs of food. I've studied it. <laughs> and so uh, I like being able to, if I know the menu, to be able to take the wine that pairs well with the food in there with me. Okay. Uh, and, and also the cost benefit. You can't, you can't beat that. The typical uh, restaurant markup is anywhere from 300 to 500%. So. That's ridiculous. Uh, that's, yeah. Is that why they do 50% off on Monday? That's why they can do that, and they're still turning they're a profit. Still making money. Yeah, it's not as much, but yeah. And I, got, I want to emphasize, BOB is, is not for everybody. I mean, people like Rocky or maybe even Eric, we tend to know we like food-wise, so we can pair our wines. But if you don't know that, maybe it's not the greatest idea to go to BYOB. I mean, you're going to save money, but if you bring the wrong bottle of wine and you don't like what they have on the menu, you're going to be disappointed. So... Uh, like we do, we always ex we'll study the menu ahead of time, go online and check it out and see what's going to pair for this or that. And um, I think that's probably a better way to do it. Just don't show up at a restaurant BYOB without having some idea what you might want to eat with just a bottle of Barefoot and Bubbly. Because you, you might be pretty disappointed yeah. if you do that and you're not really serving anything if you don't enjoy the meal. Yeah. And the wine that you did bring doesn't really go with what you want to eat at the restaurant. So what are some popular meals that will go with some popular wines? Can you think of any offhand? I got Rocky, start with this one. I have a few wines. Rango's with pasta, right? Is that the thing? I know you're a big white, with steak. white guy sometimes. So, so, the, so the classic pairing is, um, we'll talk first classic pairings and then misconceptions. Yeah. Classic pairings, red meat with red wine, oh, uh, fish and pork with white wine. Um, but the misconception is that what really is important is not the red meat or the white meat it is the flavorings that are involved. So if you take a piece of fish like salmon and you, and you put some heavy garlic, some heavy like blackened seasoning or something like that, that might actually go better with a red wine if, if the seasonings are potent and overpowering the fish part of it. Um, you, I typically don't think that there's a lot of steaks that go better with white wine, but if it's July and, it's, and you're sitting outside on a patio and it's 90 degrees, honestly, a white wine is gonna taste better to me in that kind of setting. Okay. So, but, but generally, um, red wines with steak, typically um, a Cabernet, a Merlot, uh, maybe like a Chianti would also work well. Uh, if you're going to do a pasta dish, you want to go to the Italian wines. Um, and then if you're going to go uh, fish and pork, you're going to want to do white wines. Uh, if you're going to do Asian food, I would typically go with a, a white wine that's on the sweeter side, um, like a Gewürztraminer or a maybe a, a Riesling, like a mid-sweet Riesling. Uh, I guess that's, and then oysters and champagne. And you've got to throw rosé in there, too. I think rosé, since they're so huge right now, and, uh, I mean, they really have exploded in popularity. Rosés pretty much go with, I would say, almost anything, mm -hmm. yeah. especially in the spring and summer. Um, just don't chill them too much, as we've talked about on the show numerous times. I think we've all come to the conclusion. Wait, you can over-chill a, a Riesling? You just lose so much flavor. We, uh, Not Riesling, excuse me. Rosé, or right? even white wines in general, you can drink them a little too cold, well, and then you lose yeah. a lot of the flavor profile. Yeah. Interesting. Uh, and my off. wife loves rosé. This is tis the season for the rosé. It is, and like it's a good rosé is fine room temperature. So that's really how you know if you have a good rosé. Because even though it's good when it's chilled, if it's still good when you take a sip, ten minutes later. Not that we ever have wine in our glass after ten minutes, but if the average person did still have some rosé in your glass after ten minutes, it still should taste pretty good. But the interesting thing, and this is where we've kind of learned this from doing this show so many times, is that we will start with a wine. Maybe if we're going to have rosé in the lineup, it's going to be first. You want to start light to heavy, and so then later on we'll say, you know what? Let's revisit that rosé, and all of a sudden it tastes completely different. Oh, yeah. Or the white wine will taste completely different than it did at the beginning because as it warms up, some of the flavors tend to come out more. You know, the, chilling it too much can mute the flavors. So as a teacher, I'm a lifelong learner. I try to learn something new every day. Mm -hmm. So glad I'm here learning stuff about wine. 
I'm going to go home and educate the wife. Can't yeah. they, they, oh, don't educate too much. They don't like getting oh, comfortable. Yeah. <laughs> Honey, we're going outside. <laughs> we're going to grill outside with a rosé. Can't go wrong with that. Very cool. Uh, oh, wait, back to the... You're at your favorite restaurant, so you're at Bon Appetit. I picked Bon Appetit, but... Uh, you can have anyway. four guests that are alive. Who are you picking? Four guests as in... Oh. Same question is going to go to you. So. Okay. As a celebrity mean? Or? So, yep. Anybody in the world. Celeb, athlete, politician, relative. Wow, that's a good question. Okay. Four people at the table. Wow. I'm going to go with... Um, I'm going to mix it up. I'm going to go with Dr. Thomas Sowell. I'm going to go with, as an actor, I'm probably going to go with Clint Eastwood, even though he's a little older. I'm sure he could still talk to me. Uh, and then I'm going to go switch over to Walter E. Williams, another academic. And I'll round it off with you know what? I'm going to round it off with Chloe Savigny. Oh, nice. I, I've always liked her. Yes, I've always liked her. She's in that great. Is she homely in? No. No, she. Uh, what was she in? Um, I can't think of it. I liked it when she was in Big Love with Whip Axman. I okay. never saw that, but the um, Mormons and so forth. Um, that was a great miniseries on HBO. Bill, Bill Pax was, he sorely missed. He was a great actor. I love Bill Paxman. Hmm. Chloe. All right, there's mine, Rock. And then who's Dr. The, both of those are academics? Those are academics, uh, conservative African-American thinkers. Uh, but don't let that scare you. I think they're both brilliant in their own way. And they offer a different perspective on a lot of things. And uh, they've been around a long time. So I, I would highly recommend people check them out if they're writers. Cool. I just Claire Danes. I confused her for Claire Danes. Oh, okay. Oops. Yeah. Chloe. Totally different. So let's see. Let me think about. Yeah, I, I'm going to say this. Sure. Are you using the Googles to find? Your I'm trying to. Today? As I'm thinking about it, brainstorming. No, I'm I'm writing it down because I'm going to forget. <laughs> I, I know. Um, Number one is Peyton Manning. Uh, I went to uh, college with him. Of course you did. Three of the four years I was there, he was at that college. And he was just, even back then, Peyton Manning was, was a superstar, like a national superstar. So you would be at a restaurant. If Peyton Manning came walking in with a couple football players, by 10 minutes later, the entire place would just be packed. It was, Peyton's here, Peyton's here. And this was before cell phones, you know, I'm going to age myself. Um, <laughs> so that would definitely be my number one. Good one. Like um, number two, interestingly enough, I'd, I don't think he's the greatest actor in the world, but I've always heard wonderful things about Keanu Reeves. I would, I've always thought, like, I'd like to sit down with that guy and just pick yeah. his brain because who has that kind of money, that kind of career, and will just sit in a subway or, or sit at a, a, a cafe by himself sipping on coffee and people come over and he's like, yeah, sit down, I'll talk to you and that kind of... So I would definitely put him there. Um, yeah, there's so many subway picks of him, just yeah, subway. It's yeah, a big deal. It's amazing. Um, I'm going to say because I'm a musician, I have to throw a musician in here. I, this could be weird or it could be cool because he seems kind of like an oddball, but Eddie Vedder was my favorite oh, wow. singer back in the 90s, and that's when I really got started singing in a band and playing guitar and doing that. So I, I, I just think it would be really cool to, um, to sit down with someone who was kind of my idol back when I was uh, you know, in my teens and early 20s kind of thing. And then the fourth person, this is going to sound corny, but it's 100% true. My wife, Sandy, would have to be there just because I would want her to enjoy this meal Damn, with, with the other three of them. Oh, and, and, well, and let me tell you, I was not prompted oh, that question, God. so uh, that I actually did think that up. On All right, I'm screwed. Yeah. I'm yeah, sorry. You're, you're screwed, sorry. Bobby. I'm sorry. I just, uh, he still loves you. So, hey, the luck is really good music. I hope you have air conditioning in your doghouse. Uh, <laughs> Damn it. You play music, too? Uh, I am a, a singer and a guitarist, and I used to be the lead singer in a band. Uh, for several years, but I am way too old to do that now. So cool. me and the lead guitarist, uh, Hat Trick was the name of the band. Me and the lead guitarist uh, decided when the band split up that we would just start doing an acoustic duo. And so he plays guitar, I play guitar, he's better at guitar, but we just sing and play happy hours and we're not out until 3.30 in the morning packing up band equipment and driving back from... Where was that great place know. I saw you perform? Uh, was it last year, that outdoor venue? Oh, you came to... We were playing at a, um, a brewery. Uh, where was that? I don't remember the was name. Boomf no, not Boomf that was out. It uh, was in like Hamden. It was at a hill or something like that. Yeah. Like a Hamden area, yeah. Yeah, he set that up. I cannot remember the name of that brewery, but yeah. So yeah, you've seen uh, that. Live, I love live music. Live music is wonderful outside. Can't mm -hmm. beat it. Nice day. Yep. Acoustic is really cool. Acoustic is awesome. Yeah. 
You cover to your own? Cover, yeah. I've tried writing and collaborating with band members. It is incredibly right, difficult. you got to give us a little a Eddie better. Come on, look at the camera. Uh, let's see. Jeremy Spoken. Am I, yeah. Is that right? Is he Pearl Jam? Or no? Clearly I remember picking on the boys in the harmless old word that we can't say on here. Oh, but we unleashed the lion, yeah. Nice his teeth and with the least ass lady's breast. How could I forget? I'll stop right That was there. freaking That's awesome. Put him on the spot. On the I, I think Rocky's going to be singing more on Two Guys and a Lot of Wine. Maybe we'll do a Rocky that was a episode. That's the first time that I've ever seen. It sure it. is. Yes, that's freaking great. Well, Feeney okay. talks with friends. Let's go. So it comes out. Yeah, it's episode. I love yes, it. There Thank we you, are. Rocky. That was awesome. great. You Two Guys and a Lot of Wine. I'm so happy to be here. Again, we're at... Um, where are we going? Town Hall. This is great. We're connecting with the West Hartford Community Interactive. Tell us about the West Hartford Community Interactive. Well, they do a lot of great things, first of all. I mean, if you have any interest in trying to do, uh, create your own show, definitely contact Jen Evans or go to their website. Um, I think that's what Community Interactive is all about. I mean, yes, there's different forms of media out there now, as you know, as we all know, but community television is still extremely important. I think it gives people who might be a little shy otherwise to have access to a director, a producer, staff that will help you not only put your show together, but maybe sort of if you have an idea, sort of make it a little bit more doable on a short format. Because generally you don't have as long on a community television show. You've got 30 minutes, so you know you might need a little help in organizing that. And in regards to WHCTV, uh, WHCI, uh, that one time this was considered raked as one of the best small cable television uh, community access channels in the United States. Fantastic. And uh, I wouldn't be surprised if they're still up there because uh, it's, a, it's a hidden little gem. And so many people in West Hartford don't know about it. That's what's so surprising. No, Jen Evans is great. I don't know if she could hear me. Jen Evans. Oh, she hear you back there. Yeah, she's waving at us. She's the executive director. She's been here since 1998. She is. But she's well, been yeah. the executive director since 2008. And I'm honored to be on the board of directors now for the U.S. Hartford um, Community Interactive. So thank you. With that being plugged, we got a big save the date, November 9th. Oh, yes. yes. How are you going? Fun. We're doing that wine show. So we'll be doing that. <laughs> so... Two guys and a lot of wine. We'll be doing a wine tasting. It's going to be great. Video highlights, special guests. We're going to right over in the West Hartford uh, Town Hall. I actually know it, right? Same building, but a couple buildings now. Six o'clock, be there. We're working on a price, but save the date. 45 years. 45 years. And I think as of right now, my good friend Ray Hardman from CPTV uh, has agreed to be the MC. Okay. And I think he's up for an Emmy for his show Around Town, which is on CPTV. I think he's up for a second or third Emmy. So, we have an Emmy Award winning host. He is. He's, he's actually won Emmys before, but his new show that's on CPTV now is uh, doing really well. And he goes around the state uh, interviewing different people, doing different things, sort of what you do. Nice. Um, more people that are artists and so forth like that. But uh, as of right now, Ray has committed to hosting me. And uh, for some of you who may or may not know, Ray's band, when he had a band before he became way too busy with life, the radiation does the opening soundtrack for our show and the closing soundtrack for our show. So thanks again, Ray. Ray leads the Radiations. Ray was, uh, yes, their band was the Radiation. I like they used to perform a lot, but he's just too busy now. So, All right, save the day. I hope to see everyone there. And thank you again, Jen. She's hard work and she dedicates a lot of time, energy, um, efforts to, to make sure that our West Hartford Community Interactive is up and running. So thank you for being a good friend. Uh, speaking of which, our motto, be a good friend, right? Pick up trash, hold the door, give a compliment, be charitable. I'm going to back and forth. So Rocky, what makes Bobby P a good friend? Bobby P, what makes Rocky a good friend? I'll let Rocky go first. I've been doing a lot of talking. <laughs> uh, Bobby's just a good guy all around. I mean, he's, he's always got positive energy that's just, it oozes from his pores. He's always got good things to say. He's always got good wines to drink. He's always just, uh, it, it, he is the kind of guy that'll hold the door for you and, and say the right, polite thing. I'm opposite Larry David character, so yeah, it's just the complete opposite. He's, he's, I, I can't say enough good things about Bobby. I, you know, when I started doing the show, it was not just, hey, I found a guy that I can do a show with. We, we hang out aside from the show. We, you know, we're our, uh, we, with our wives and, and the four of us, we'll go out to dinner all the time. And it's just, it's one of my favorite two people in the world. And uh, I mean, 
I don't know what else to say. That, that's very nice, Rocky. And I'm going to add to that that since I met Rocky, like I said, it's almost been seven years now. I think, besides the fact that I just love his little Tennessee accent, uh, uh, yeah, and I, beat me to it because I've noticed I, it more and more I, now. I walked up and said, "Yo, Rocky's going to be on the show because we got to have somebody on the show with an accent here in West yeah. Hartford." Mm -hmm. I I think that's probably why the show does so well and we get so many hits because people say, "Yeah, I'm going to watch that." We just fiddling guy, but I really want to hear that guy with the Tennessee accent because he knows what the heck he's talking about. So, but yeah, no, Rocky's, Rocky and Sandy are great people. Uh, we have such good times together. And I think Rocky has made me a better wine person because he's so freaking knowledgeable about wine and he's so humble. I mean, I can't tell you how many blind tastings he's won at restaurants right here in town. And uh, he'll go through the wines and he will, he just picks them out and just knows what the heck he is talking about. And he's, he probably will use a big word that his wife always yells at him for using. I have several big words that I use. And I'm sure we're going to make them use them tonight. I, I make them use them. The, the Desiree <laughs> podcast, she's a, she won the raffle at the New Park Brewery uh, comedy show. And she was a special guest yeah, or a yeah, special. She was a great guest. You dropped a word. I, I was like, oh, my goodness, what is this? i got to write this one down. Which one was that? with H. Hob. Uh, uh, it, I don't know. I could pull it up. It's just... Methoxypyrazine, maybe? <laughs> And no, it so if you have a corked wine, it's actually a chemical called 246 trichloroanisole. It might have, that might have been what it is. I know. I, 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 I don't know. It won't come to me, but I have it's, to watch it, rewatch it's it. It's ridiculous wine geekiness. It was great. I you're only so, say it because it's. You're it's, learning wine. You're learning it's vocabulary, yeah. history. I mean, this is great. Pairings. I'm having a blast. This well, that's great. what's great about wine because the history. It's, it's like anything else. If you like history, Beer has history too. Don't get me wrong. I know beer is really big now, but wine specifically, um, it's just there's so much history in the different regions and where wine comes from. And I think that's part of the fun. Just, uh, you know, you can have a little acre or two acres of land and that wine's going to taste completely different than right over here where this guy's plot is. He's got his own acre or half of land. It's just, it's fascinating. It's an intellectual experience too when you can taste a wine and you really start to analyze what's in this wine. And oh, yeah. We're, we're tasting new wines on the show every time we do it, and it's like, oh, wow, I'm detecting this, and I'm detecting this, and it's got uh, the various elements. And he touched upon blind tasting. Blind tasting is when you just taste, and we're, I think we're going to be doing this later. You taste the wine, and you just try to guess what it is based on what you're tasting. And they say that that's one of the most difficult things that you can do because not only is it using all five of your senses, it's also using the left side and the right side of your brain, and they all have to be in synchronization in order to tell what is in that wine. It is incredibly difficult. And I'm, I, I no, wish what's I was, that French word when you're a uh, sauvignon, what are you, a souet? When okay. you taste wine, you're a wine, certified wine. Oh, sommelier. Yes, that's sommelier. actually well, like, what well, Most people sommelier. say sommelier, it's actually pronounced sommelier. Yes, sommelier. <laughs> so think about somme and then the letter L and then yay. That makes sense. Marsha McCurdy, she's the deputy chief fire marshal. She's a som sommelier. sommelier. Yes, sommelier. Yes. Yes. Somal sommelier. I did not know that. Yeah, I would love to take that course. I took the W set course. I wear my pen every now and then. I did today just because I was going to be on the show. Uh, in order to get certified, though, for some, you have to go to either Portland, Maine, or um, New York City oh. uh, to, to take the to take the class. And, and I don't have the time commitment. So the W set is kind of a very similar course, uh, but it doesn't have the actual serving portion. And what'd you do to earn that? I, I took an online course. Uh, my wife actually took it too. Um, there's W set one, two, three. Uh, then there's Diploma and then there's Master of Wine. Um, I've, I'm currently on two. I'm studying for three, but I've got to put together some money. To, it's $1,000 to take the course. I really want to take the course uh, for three, uh, but I've read the book through twice. <laughs> and wow. one of these days, I'm waiting for Sandy to uh, get some free time too, so that we want to both take the course again together. So that's the free will be. Yeah, that's one thing. I, I, I don't know if I told you. Technically, me and Rocky are not in the wine business. So Rocky is sort of in the wine business now, but that we. We never started or have been in the wine business. We just do this for a hobby. For the love of the game. Love of the game. Yeah. Yeah, we talked about a couple of events. We also have um, Muzzy Field, Bristol Blues, on July 13th. Please check this out. Tickets are 8 bucks. It's a fundraiser. They dress up like Field of Dreams. They use wood bats. Uh, Pretty cool. played there in Bristol, so it's great. Uh, the Yard Goats on August 16th. Friends of Nicholas. Nicholas Parenti uh, saved up all his energy. He was 10 years old. Uh, went to our Yard Goats game, surrounded by friends and family. He passed away two weeks later. Uh, so we celebrate now an annual Nic uh, Friends of Nicholas game. This will be our third game at the Yard Goats, a very special event. Uh, we have our golf tournament, September 14th. You guys play golf? Mm -hmm. I was in the profession for five years out of college. No way. All right, September 14th, save the date. We'll be at Tungstis, our third annual. We'll put the links in there. 
uh, our sixth annual Makerspace. You know what Makerspace is? When you're building with cardboard and duct tape. Oh, wow. Sixth annual. Uh, that's going to be in collaboration with Elmwood Makerspace. We're going to be at the senior uh, Elmwood Senior Center. Great time. And then the 45th. I already shot it out the 45th. This is great. Now, I got to say one thing about the yard goats. I mean, they really do a great job oh. with families. You know, it, it, say what you will about Hartford, but I mean, the yard goat stadium, I think, is just a joy to go to. They run a really nice operation, and they're great with kids. Uh, very community Very community oriented. Absolutely fantastic. They do fun things. They let the kids run on the field. They have these cute little goat, goat races when the kids are like two-year-old kids running around. Uh, they let us do the 50-50 raffle. We broke the record, 3000 I think $3,500. We raised Friends wow. of Feeney, so very proud of that record. We went around and told us, and uh, they split it in half. So we got seventeen fifty. And then the winner got seventeen fifty, but it was a great. I had yard, um, Game Day Connor on. He's the on-field host. He's a great guy. He's he going to be the heckle hole. So if you ever played golf, he's going to stand at a hole and heckle you. You either pay him twenty dollars <laughs> to shut it. up, <laughs> or you pay him twenty dollars to heckle your buddy. Okay. That raised like three ninety-five last yeah. year. Game Day Connor, thank you. And then Jeff Dooley, the voice of the Yard Goats, is an awesome guy. He was a podcast guest. So, yeah, they're wonderful people over there at the Yard Goats. All right. Are you ready to do some tasting? I think we are ready to do some tasting. And I think, Eric, um, we're gonna, we should probably start with yours. All right. Now, do you, Matt Whitney, brown bagging it. Do you ever play brown bagging it? He used to have these Instagram reels. Yeah, he used to. He, he, did, he did like 100 and something shows and then he yeah. stopped. I wish he'd bring it back. I want him to bring I'd it back, to too. A guest on. I wanted to be a celebrity guest on a brown bagging reel. Yeah, right. He's so yeah, busy. Every now and then he would have uh, somebody on. So do you do, do you price, location, and uh, type of wine? Or? Yeah, well, so I think what we should do is uh, when we talk about pricing on the show, for some reason, I don't know why, we can't actually say the actual price. It has to be a range. So you can't okay. get it's just a range of the price. And uh, region, which would be, I guess, uh, what country it's from, and then the type of wine variety, uh, the, the grape variety. So those three. We don't want to make it too complex. But Rocky's going to get all three anyway. So oh, no. Rocky, so I he was talking you up before. Yeah, He's like, I, I miss a lot nice. more than Rocky's I undefeated. Get. He'll be closer. I'm pretty sure. I think, I, I think I'm tied for the rec. So at Union Kitchen, they have a, a blind uh, tasting where if you get it correct, uh, oh, yeah, you get to take the bottle winners home. online, okay. and I've won five times. Uh, I think um, there's a, the, uh, the guy who is the manager of uh, or the owner, owning partner over at Vented, uh, Michael Voigt, I think has also won five times. So I'm tied for, for first place for that. Last I heard, that that's pretty like impressive. A few months ago, but that's uh, so cool. No, I've always so, seen the winners. But I, I'll tell you what, I'm. Are you five for five? I never lost. No, no, I lose all the time. Okay, like it's, so it, what's your record? Nobody. Five wins. How many losses? Easily twenty losses. Oh wow. Yeah, it's I, I lose a lot more than. How I do you enter to play? Just you just go and you you pay fifteen dollars for a glass. They pour it and it's like this. You can't see what you're getting, and it's usually well worth fifteen dollars or more for the glass based on what they're pouring. Yep. And uh, you you pay your fifteen dollars regardless. But if you get it right, you get the entire bottle and take home with you. Very so, cool. Yep. And you, same thing, you have to name what? Location? You, brand? No, it's way more difficult than that. They have a list of over 200 wines at their place, and you have to go on and you have to pick off oh, the list oh, what it this is. One. So I could, I could be tasting it, and I could say, okay, I know this is Rioja. Like, there's no question in my mind. And this actually happened the other day. I was like, I know this is white Rioja. I know it's aged. And then I go on their list, and I'm like, there's six of them. Oh. And I, I'm not that good. I don't know that anybody's that. So you good. narrowed you it can down. Name the producer. Yeah. Like even if you're going for your master sommelier exam, you don't have to name the producer in order to pass the test. I mean that's really tough. Okay. So you know I might go there. I might narrow it down to a, a certain grape, a certain region, and then I'll get the the what, one wrong. Wait, I'll go what back. notes hit you that make you think that to narrow it down to that six that that for that instant that time. So this one was I could tell it was aged because you're looking at a white wine. It's going to be a little bit darker. So so. When wines age, you'll notice like a red wine becomes more brick color, a white wine comes more golden color. It's the same color, but if you put that in red wine versus put it in a white wine, it's going to have that effect, right? Oh, interesting. So as it ages, you can see the color. With the flavor, I say the aged white wine, uh, this is just for me. I, I think it has kind of almost like a, a plastic taste to it. And that's, not a, that's, not a, that's not selling the wine, but that's how I remember it. Almost yeah. like when you pick up a piece of fresh Tupperware and you smell it, there's like a plastic aroma that goes along with it. Interestingly okay. enough, we're talking about South African wines. Yeah, no, they, 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 you're right. You're right but, about that. Uh, yeah, and then um, just the flavors that were in there, to me, uh, a lot of citrus. Um, there's still some minerality. 
uh, that was going on, and that is Avira is the grape that just they're typically lemon bombs when they're young, and as they age, they get that kind of uh, a little so bit cool. more of a scorched earth flavor with uh, with the still with the lemon syrup. And where did you get this wine from? Did you pick this out yourself? Did somebody recommend? So this, this is my wife's favorite. Oh, okay. So shout out to Nicole Feeney. I have to bring out Matt Whitney knows. Uh, do you want to do the point? You want me to pass the glass? Oh, here, oh, I got a gift too. So please enjoy. I don't oh. know if you want to pour it in that or save that for later. But you're being a good Thank friend. You Thank you very much. Being Thank here, you. it's yeah. perfect for oh, the beach cool. or the pool. Oh, Maybe not. We gotta get some. We gotta get some swag. I got right. a new kitten, so this is perfect because he perfect. can't we break can get it. some swag on two guys. Yeah, right. So I don't know. You want to use that or you want to use the wine? You, oh, can't you drink out of plastic, right? You could, but we'll use the wine glasses because yeah, you know, that also wine. gives the coloring and the flavor and the. That's true. You might want to see the color for the purposes of blind tasting. We might want to use a glass. All right, so I'm gonna. Wait, just a well, little bit. Well, right? <laughs> it's not Chardonnay. See, you're right. It's not Chardonnay. It's so good. And it's it's not super dark, so I don't think it's going to be too, too old, but that doesn't mean anything. Yeah, it's... You're right. Not Chardonnay. I can tell you this much. Uh, oh, you got a, an aroma what, what we're looking at right now, which is kind of like that medium level of red for red wine, is probably about the most common. So this is, this is not going to be easy just by looking at it. I'm not really breaking a whole lot down. I can say what it isn't. You know, it's not like to not from Uruguay. It's a more to kill that one. But, uh, well, cheers. Cheers. This is wonderful. All right. Two guys on a whole lot of wine. Feeney Talks with Friends collaboration. Okay. Got to take a big I just took lift. a sniff, and I'm going to say that this is Russian River Pinot Noir. I know it's a Pinot Noir. Now, how do you know that right away? It's like that. I'm, 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 you're, you're not wrong or not right. No. Just yet. I'm just... Uh, you want to play, Dave? But, but see, this is, uh, what I, this is what I don't... I, you're not supposed to do when you're evaluating wine. You're supposed to be like, okay, this is a, a pale, you know, red, medium concentration of... of you know, whatever, fading towards a watery meniscus, no signs of gas or flocculation. You know, there's minimal staining in the, uh, and, and, and you go on down, it's called check somal the legs or no? sommelier grid. Yeah, so you, you, you look at the legs and if you can see like this one's probably got, uh, I'm gonna put it at about 13 and a half percent alcohol. Yeah, I got a little burn. I would agree with that. Yeah. Have you um, tasted yet? Yes. Yeah, the, the, the legs that go down, it has to do with the uh, uh, rate of evaporation of alcohol versus water in the wine. So the longer the legs are, uh, the, the slower moving and thicker the legs are, the more alcohol is in the wine. What's interesting though, this is your wife's favorite. This is the kind of red that even in the summer you can drink. Mm. Even though it's got a higher alcohol content, which some people might think is not easy to drink, I can drink this in the summer, no problem at all. So the question is, I'm going to still say it's a Pinot Noir, but Eric sort of sent some signals that maybe it's not the Russian River. Yeah, I mean, I, that was just straight off the note. Yeah. Not that good. But uh, I'm, I'm, it, it's, it's very, now that I'm looking at it, it's pretty translucent. So there's not a whole lot of grapes that are this translucent. One's Pinot Noir, one is Gamay, one is uh, Carmenere. Uh, you might get that. Sometimes Chianti can be that. I don't, don't definitely don't think this is Chianti. Um, and uh, that's what else could be that light? I'm uh, gonna say it's American. Uh, it's uh, definitely Grenache American. Could be that light too. Um, so, yeah. Oregon. I'm getting it to chip already. Come I'm on. going to. I'm going to go out on a limb and guess that I might actually know what this wine is. This is a tri-county wine um, from three different places in California. It's called Miomi. Uh, that's, it's got, uh, it's just got a lot of, uh, so when Miomi came out, they did this thing where they took wines from three different regions and they figured out the perfect way to blend them together. That the American consumer just loved it. And so everybody's, it's either Miomi or it's a copycat of that. That's my guess. I'm not saying that is what it is, but that would be what my. I went to the Travelers and that's what be. they were serving there. Miomi. Miomi. Yeah, it's incredibly popular. Again, I'm not. I'm not. I'm not tied to that guess. This. It's always hard for me to go after Rocky because, like I said, it's. Uh, yeah. But it's got you know the, the 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 thing that you expect out of Pinot Noir is just bright cherries, and this is bright cherries. Yeah, and it, I mean, if this is one of those times that if I missed it, I wouldn't be upset at myself because I'm like it's still a pretty good guess. So, uh, I, I'm going to say I, I'm going to go with Oregon. Just Oregon. All right, I'm going to say California Pinot Noir and. Price point probably around twenty bucks. Oh, we can't do that. Oops. Drum roll, please. Okay. All right. So this is bread and butter. Pinot bread and Noir. butter. Pinot Noir. California. That is California. Yeah. Napa, California. Yep. That's a Napa. That's a what year? That's I didn't see the year. <laughs> <laughs> 
but I'm gonna, say, I'm gonna say it's new. It's definitely not. It's 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 probably 22, 21. Yeah, somewhere. Around. And how much alcohol? Uh, I'm gonna say 13 and a half to 14. Yeah, it's it's 13.5. Yeah, 13.5. Napa, California. Bread and butter. Yeah, she loves this. Yep. It's it's delicious. And once again, it's this kind of it's the kind of wine that you can definitely drink in the spring or summer. It's it's that good. And Matt has suggested flavor uh, wines that are similar, but wife always goes back to the bread and butter. Mm -hmm. There's a process, process called malolactic fermentation that gives uh, Chardonnays that buttery taste. Their Chardonnay, if you like the buttery, if you're having like some Dungeness crab or something like that, that's like a buttery dish, the bread and butter Chardonnay is one of the butteriest Chardonnays that you will find. And at the price point, if you like that, you're not spending like a Rombauer uh, type of price. So I would recommend that too, if, you, if you're into the buttery Chardonnays. Thumbs up. Very nice. Good, All Good right. choice. Well, great guessing, that was awesome. All right, are you guys finishing your wine? Should I uh, go to the next one? Do you want to dump it in a pour glass? Uh, I'm gonna dump it in here because I forgot to bring water. So if I get parched, I'm just gonna take another sip of this. Here we are. All right, let me have my bottle there, Rock. Mine's the aluminum. All right, so I'm pretty sure Rock is going to get where this is from. You might also, mm -hmm. Eric. I don't know what your palate is in regards to one. I have an aerator attached to this, so look how dark that is already. So, so that's not Pinot Noir. Just this is not Pinot Noir. Well, I don't know, Eric. Are you wanting to guess too, or am I? I'm going to try I'm, my I'm, best. I'm, I'm, I'm going to embarrass myself. Gonna, I'm not going to give it away. I mean, or we can just all me, me and you can collaborate and you. Can I can't talk think. too much because I don't want to give anything away because Rocky knows my. L l my palate. So if I don't want to talk too much, I'm just going to let you guys first smell and taste. Well, it's not hitting my nose like the Pinot's. Mm -hmm. No, it should. Yeah, that, that uh, bread so and butter the first thing out I of the glass at you. You should taste it rather than smell Okay, it. okay. It's dry. It is supposed to be dry. Okay. I haven't embarrassed myself yet. Dry. Dark. Beautifully dark. There's so many things this can be. I, I'm going to check in the legs. I, What's I, this move? It's just aerating. Or false. Yeah, just kind of like yeah, aerating. Yeah, false, it works. Yeah. Is it, that it, just showing off? It, no, it, it helps get oxygen into the, just you can say it's kind of like centrifuging it, getting the oxygen down in there. And I really, um, from my days of actually, I used to be in a, blind, a competitive blind tasting group, and I knew this a lot better. I was way better then. I'm, I'm, you know, looking at the legs, this is, this has got some alcohol to it. Um, Actually, it's 14.5. Yeah. <sighs> but it doesn't taste as strong as the bread and butter. The tough thing about this one, this has got a lot of darker fruits. So this is not on the cherry end. This is more on the blackberry yeah, end. Uh, yep. Um, and so when, when it comes to that, my, my mind goes to it could be, it could be Cabernet. It could be, uh, God, this could be uh, Argentinian Malbec. It is a blend be, with one prominent grape as the main for us. So it is a blend, yeah. but one grape is the prominent. So this, I mean, my, my initial thought was maybe like a Cote de Rhone. Um, just based on, I know Cote de Rhone's tend to get that kind of purpley around the edge, um, but also Malbecs do that too. But I know you, you don't drink a lot of Malbecs. So I'm going to, I'm going to do something I'm not supposed to do. And I'm going to, just because I know you, I'm going to check that off the list. Um, I know you no, drink Marlo, a lot of, way off. Uh, I don't think no, more it's not way off at all. No. I don't know too many. Marlowe. We'll go easy, easy on this one. Just the predominant grape varietal and uh, what country? Okay. <laughs> yeah, I'm. Um, I should have prepped. I'm going to take a course. Yeah, this is a um, Grenache Syrah blend from either Spain or France. Spain or France. I'm going to go to. <sighs> I'm going to go to France. I'm, I'm smelling the lakes of Capistrano. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this is, it, this is, you know what movie that's from? That is, this is tough because there's so many things this could be. Let me have a little more. Oh, before we make a decision. Yeah, I got nothing. What's, and how come the aerator? Yeah, so this I'm is a cheat. I'm seeing if I know that gold. Yeah, so this is actually a great little find. I don't know if I, I think I got this from New Rocky. It's a Christmas gift of yours back. It's a small aerator. You just stick it into a bottle of wine that you've opened up. It's obviously mostly for red wine. And it does the same thing you're, we're doing when we're spinning the glass. It just gives a little bit of air. And uh, generally for a wine that's got some years on it, you do want to aerate a little bit. Not that this wine is that old, but I'm going 
country. Just throwing a dart right now. Yeah, go ahead. Oh, country? You give yeah. me a hint. All right. So I was going to say Oregon, but Oregon's not a country. So I'm trying to mm -hmm. read you, you're getting a little I'm trying to read him a little bit. Yeah. You didn't, you're a good poker if you knew, player. If you knew me, you'd be able to read me. But uh, You're a good poker player. Bobby's a good I've played poker with yeah, him. Yeah, we've had some good poker. Yes, we have. He didn't crack. I tried to get him. Yeah. I'm just going to go more low Spain. Final answer. All right. This one probably is going to be no surprise to Rocky. This is a Bordeaux. Oh. Oh. Say it. Eighty percent Merlot. Cabernet. But. It is a Bobby Dazzler, as they say on. Uh, so that's Cabernet. Says. It is a. Oh, mostly Merlot. Mostly Merlot. It is the Reserve Chateau Le Mont Vincent, and you should know Eric. So I'm Eric, a huge, you, you did better than uh, I did on that one. That's for huge sure. French wine, and there's a reason for that. So. Most French wines like this, they have a specific terroir flavor-wise. It's very dry. I like a dry wine. It's still flavorful, but it's dry. It's not overly sweet, which is why French wine sometimes really goes with a lot of different types of foods because there's nothing in there that's overpowering anything. Oh, yeah. I, I and uh, for, for Rocky, I wrote down what the actual combinations are. So we have, I think it's 80% Merlot, 12% Cab Franc, 8% Cabernet Sauvignon. Okay. And it is 14.5. I got the country right. I'll at least, I'll at least check that one. Yeah, it's a Bordeaux uh, Superior, and it's a 95-pointer from uh, Decanter Magazine. Yeah, it's just it's 95 out of 100? 100. Yep. It's got a lot of blackberry in there. That's kind of what um, led me away from Merlot. Merlot tends to be on the red fruit side, but uh, some of the Bordeaux can be very dark brooding fruit. And you're looking at so, uh, between 14 and $18. So Bordeaux is... Is always a mixture of a bunch of things? No, it, oh. Bordeaux is a region of France, and there are uh, a lot of different mm -hmm. wines come from. Yeah. Right. But it could be right. a lot of different types of things. So you'll see a generic term like a Bordeaux. It just means that's the region of France that the wine came from. And then what the different uh, vineyard does with yep. the different grapes. There's vineyards. six legally six grapes that they can use in Bordeaux. And, and, and typically they're heavy on Merlot and Cabernet. So Merlot by far is the number one grape in Bordeaux, it, and most people think it's Cabernet because those are the most famous ones. But as far as tonnage crushed, as they say in the industry goes, it's uh, two to one Merlot. To and, much, and much like champagne, you can't call uh, bubbles a champagne unless it actually is from the Champagne region of France. Yep. It's the same thing with a Bordeaux. A Bordeaux has to actually come from yeah. a region, of, that particular region. In of in the states, we call that uh, meritage. So okay. it's just basically a, a Bordeaux blend, but done in play, usually in California, in Meritage. And then Scotch right. had to be from Scotland, right? Did they change that? Did they change that rule or not? Uh, yeah, I don't remember what that was. Sure be from Scotland. I yes. believe it does. Yeah. Yeah. I, I don't know. So even though it's the middle of summer and it's been hot, both these reds, those strong and high alcohol, are perfectly acceptable yeah. for drinking in the summertime. Uh, it, it's I, I think they're perf perfectly fine for for this type of weather. Mm -hmm. So, Rox, what you got, Wex? What do we got coming? All right. Well, probably should have this was my first time. Yeah. yeah. So, you, so if you want to start pouring down here, I, I forgot we were doing blind. That's why it's wrapped in a target bag there. But oh, he oh, did man. bring a white. Okay. I'm good. 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 I was there today. <laughs> my girls. Now, will I know this wreck? Have you had this one before on the show? Uh, we have not had this one on the show. Oh, I like that. I like a I like a surprise. So. Two guys on a lot of wine, doing some wine tasting. That's right. Ooh, fruity, right oh. away. This one, could, yeah, this one leaps out of the glass at like, you. I love this one. I was wow. going to say bananas, which is weird. And this is this has been sitting for a bit. It's still delicious, even at this temperature. Yep. Oh, I should have kept it cold. Huh? I didn't think about that. We were yeah. talking earlier. This is an example of a white wine. Generally, people always want their white wines chilled. Here's a classic example of. This probably would taste a little different if it was a little colder. Mm. It's been sitting for a while. You get a little bit more bouquet. It's a little bit more flavorful. Oh, my. My, my, my. Um, I get a hint. candy almost. It's very fruity. Yeah. yeah. We, we are, we, we're off the continent, right? We're off the, we're off the uh, North America. Hey, I'll give you that much. Okay. Yeah, I'll give you that much. This is, this, I'm, I'm going to say this might be tougher. I, I, I did not know that we were doing blind tasting. I probably would have brought something easier. Um, I misunderstood what we were uh, what we were doing. Oh, that's right. I want to use process of elimination. We could, we could take France out of this one because you wouldn't bring a French wine in. I can't believe we'd do it to me. Why would you say that? <laughs> I'm not saying you're right or wrong. Okay, and, well, you know, there's that one French grape variety that I really like. It's not a French Seven Blanc. Seven and Blanc. why would it not be French Seven Blanc? It doesn't have quite the neutrality of a French Seven okay. Blanc. All right. I'll give you that. 
So seven blocks. Do you like seven blocks? You yeah. get the really citrusy ones. Oh yeah. See, I don't. If it, it's too citrusy, this is. I would guess this is not one of those. No, yeah. this is. But if it's like a Bordeaux, a, a wine I've never heard of, I'm kind of out of the. It it it. it well, are you, we'll see. Are we'll we see in the guys. classic like? We're in pretty classic, so I've given to you that it is from France. Yeah. Um, so we're in. There's several regions of France. One is. Um, Burgundy, where you're going to have Chardonnay. That's the only, uh, well, there's actually Aligote, but uh, it's Chardonnay is Burgundy. Uh, you go to Bordeaux, it's going to be Sauvignon Blanc blends with Simeon. Um, you go over to the Loire, that's going to be mostly Sauvignon Blanc or yeah. Chenin. And then if you go to the uh, Rhone Valley, that's going to be kind of more on the floral, uh, Marsan, Roussan, Viognier. And, th and those wines are just, if, if you taste more of a tropical note to it, Kind of a um, less less on the grapefruit and grass end that you would have like the Sauvignon Blancs of the of which the is that there's not that in this one. Um, what region? I'm, am I forgetting? I'm going with the Loire Valley. I'm going to go with the Loire. Okay. And you think this is Chenin or uh, uh, Sauvignon Blanc? You know, you're you're a tricky man, and I you think you might try to fool me with a Sauvignon Blanc, and I don't think I've tasted a Sauvignon Blanc from France like this. I'm gonna go with Shannon. Okay, that, that's actually a very good guess, but it's incorrect. That's all right. I'm going Savon Blanc. Okay, also incorrect. Um, ah. So this is a blend from a region called the Rhone. It is a Rhone. Damn yes. it! I was trying to throw you some hints at the fact that it was kind of. Oh no! Oh and, man! Okay, so this is the Vouv Mathilde. Uh, they have this at, at Maximum Beverage. This is on their um, Beverage Club. If you've ever seen, they do. Um, if you buy like six, you get a discount. If you buy 12, yeah. you get an even dip, deeper discount. So if you were to buy 12 of these, this would be between 12 to $14. That's a great and, buy. And uh, that is a phenomenal deal for this wine. Uh, it is a blend of Viognier, Grenache Blanc, Roussan, and Vermentino. So in all fairness, you guys, I don't think I would have gotten that if tasting it blind because that's a pretty difficult one. Um, I, I would have brought I would have brought like Chardonnay from from. It's a beautiful Napa bottle, Valley too. And, and It looks like much closer than that. Uh, Way to yeah, challenge me at my like first that. ever wine yeah, tasting, I'm, guys. I'm, uh, Thanks. I, I miss. Way I, to be a good friend. I know. I'm a terrible friend. Do you, do you have any like red stickers that say "be a terrible friend" that you can just give? <laughs> Put me the Ghostbuster yeah, sign. Yeah, exactly. But that's what's great about white wine, especially. Um, you, you never know what it's going to taste like. You always have an image of what white wine is going to taste like. Then you drink something like that, it's just no. That fruit really different. popped right out. Of, mm -hmm. yep. What fruits did I smell? You think? Uh, for me, um, I think there's like a pineapple. Uh, I think that there is a little bit of banana. I think there's some orange. Is I wasn't one. crazy for the banana. Yeah. Um, People at home are going to laugh at me for guessing banana. Yeah. They're not. No, it's, you got to. And, and see, this is what this is what we do on the show. We want I want people to just stick your nose in the glass, taste it, and just be honest. Be honest. Yeah. Throw it against the wall. What do you think? And if you think that you taste, we were talking about how some South African wines taste like band aids. If you think you taste <laughs> Tupperware or band aids, or if you think you taste like a wet rock, or um, you know, there was a there was a fi the famous. Um, the Psalm movies, I don't know if you guys have ever seen them, but there was this famous line where he's comparing Claire Valley Riesling to a cut garden hose, and they give him such a hard time about it. But, or a freshly opened can of tennis balls. I don't drink a lot of Claire Valley Riesling. It's hard to find, but I went, I said, I have to find a Claire Valley Riesling. And Just to see if it, uh... and I was, and I tasted it, and I was like, by God, he is correct. This tastes like a freshly opened can of tennis balls. That is the best way to explain it. But, you know, you just got to throw it out there and, and, and say, don't be afraid. Like, people are so like, oh, I, I don't want to say what I think this is. It's like, if you think if you think there's strawberries and it's a white wine, say it. Because it could be. People would go, mm. I was thinking that's probably one of the things I think we try to emphasize the most to people who watch the show is don't be afraid. Get out of your, com get out of your comfort level. You know, like, uh, if you're used to drinking this barefoot and bubbly or what's the other one that people always gravitate to, the cheap uh, cheap red wines? Oh, see, Spumante. Oh, Spumante. Oh, there are so many different wines. And you don't have to start expensive. Just try different ones. You never know what you're going to do. Yeah. Like. Try new things. Yep. This was fun. All right. I mean, I was 0 for, 0 for 2. Oh, that's all right. I didn't, I didn't do that. You great guessed Merlot. We'll do it again. That was, that was impressive. I'm impressed that you guessed Merlot. Because that, uh, that was 80% correct. So way better of a guess than me. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. Thank you for the credit. I appreciate yep. it. <laughs> good, that was a good teacher move. Yeah, all right. I like how you worked on that problem. Yeah. Good effort. No, this is fun. Um, can I try that again? That fruity yeah. one? Yeah. Uh, no. Oh, you want? This is one of my favorite whites. 
And it, that, that would you put it? ice cubes in this? Uh, Ooh, I was at this point question. because it's gotten to be a little too. No, long. no, saying like outside on the deck uh, or no. What I do you is I have a chiller cubes. that goes around it, and it's uh, there's some kind of like gel inside the chiller, and it's a it's a, it's a, got a, like a plastic outer, and you just put the chiller on, and it'll stay cold for a good. How long do those chillers last, Bobby? Probably like thirty minutes. Thirty forty five minutes. minutes. Like yeah. a Stanley metal. Uh, it's not metal. It's a flexible. How, how would you describe it's it? Like it's like a. Like a it's, it's got little gel packs in flexible it. Flexible plastic with bottom. gel packs in it. You put them in the freezer, and then when you take your the bottle out, you put it over the top of the yep. bottle, and it keeps the bottle cold for a really good period. About Thirty of time. thirty five minutes. Yeah, which well, is enough time for us. Gift. Yeah, because we, we finish it usually in thirty to five minutes. But have to revisit this um, one as well. What would, would you call that thing? Chiller? Better than wine chiller. Bottle, bottle chiller. Yep. I can't remember the name. Amazon anywhere. Just yeah. look Google bottle chiller. There's so many different types to choose from. Yeah, they're not but incredibly expensive. They have ones that are just rods now that you drop in the glass that are actually like this thing here, but there's a, a rod attached, and it's got a gel pack built within the metal. So you don't have to have the chiller around the bottle. It's in the bottle. So awesome. Sandy gets so mad at me because I'll do this thing where if I know it's a place where they don't have chillers and, and we're buying a bottle of uh, white or rosé, I'll actually bring the chiller with me and then I'll whip it out of my back pocket. She's like, oh, no, you're not doing this. What, in the store? Um, in the I, at, at the, no, at, at a restaurant. If, oh. we buy, if we get a bottle at a restaurant and I know that uh, they don't typically have chillers at the restaurant, because some restaurants don't. They, they, for one reason or another, but I'll bring my own chiller and it just it embarrasses her. It shouldn't mess. embarrass her. No, that's, that's always been my pet peeve. If you go to a restaurant, you're paying restaurant prices for the bottle of wine. It better be presented to you the way it should be. And if they're not going to serve it in the right cooler, bring your own damn cooler. I mean, uh, why not? Oh, I'd be remiss, Rocky, and I know I said to this, and I, I think I'll get kind of this. The oldest wine ever opened up. Oh, if you hadn't heard this. Over 2,000 years old was just found. In a Roman tomb, I think it was somewhere in, uh, what was it, uh, one of those... I read the story, I don't remember. I don't know if it was Italy, it was a Roman the tomb. The like all over the interwebs. And what did you drink it? What I drink? Well, here's the deal. It was in a, in a funeral pyre type um, uh, crypt. And the wine was infused with the burnt ashes of the dead. Right. So, and they... Won't drink it. What, well, they did say tests were done on the wine, and... Even though that it is infused with a dead person's ashes, it is perfectly drinkable. Two thousand years old. Interestingly, the the label was Soylent Green wine, which is I didn't know that they had back then. Actually, how many people even know Soylent Green? Has anybody seen Soylent Green? It's an old seventies. Uh, uh, I, I only know the line Soylent Green is people, but I've never seen the movie. That was um, that wine. Uh, so here's the guy from uh, uh, Ten Commandments and. In that Planet of the Apes, um, Charles Nesson. Yeah. Charles Nesson is old, one of those old disaster movies. That was a great movie. Oh, it's Oily Green. Always a good family movie there. Yeah. If I had to pick my favorite, though, I'm going to go with the bread and butter. Wow. It's oh, been yeah, a long yeah, time Eric, since I've had that. that. I think it's really our, good. Um, this is the best in glass. And so okay. every time we all vote on which one wins, and then we hit, take a picture of it next to it. So. Put it next to his glass, his bottle over there. So. Very nice. All right, cool. Yeah, well, I, thank I would. You. I would give that best uh, bread and butter, the best in glass. I'm honored. <laughs> there we go. I like to thank you my won. mother and my father, <laughs> my wife for picking. She's always stuck Good by choice. my side. Good choice. Best in glass. Um, well, I want to thank Dave from Direct Line Media. Hey, Dave, Dave, thank you, my man. Dave, he's been doing with me. I did behind the brand. He talked about Friends of Feeney. And uh, here we are, 110 episodes later. We've celebrated wow. the 50th podcast at Playhouse on Park. We celebrated the 100th podcast at Playhouse on Park. And we're getting to 200. So it's wonderful meeting you. You guys are good friends. I had a wonderful time. We had, had a great time. Yeah, thanks for inviting us for me. Show. Recommendations, closing remarks. Uh, recommendations. Well, I have a feeling we'll be seeing more of you, Eric, as time goes on. And. Um, I'm going to say I just love the fact that you're still doing things here in the community. You're doing things for West Hartford and uh, just in general um, giving, people, giving people a voice. I think that's what it's all about, giving people a voice that maybe are either too shy or I don't want to use the word afraid, but just need somebody else to maybe speak for them. And I think that's what we all do, even though we do it to a different, to a different degree. I think uh, what you do is really great. So thank, thank you. you so much. I appreciate that. Everything he just said. I couldn't have said it better myself. The, uh, the Friends in uh, Feeney is quite ubiquitous around town. You've really done a lot of good things for, for this town and, and the charities, and that's, uh, that's qu it's quite impressive. And my friend Avi loved being on your show. I know you, oh. did, you did the wing show on that. He really got a kick out of that. So that was Avi was great. Episode 91, we ate some very hot wings. Like, and we'll wait to eat them. 
Are hot wings big in Tennessee? Do they have to be hot? What's the deal? Yeah, they do that hot chicken thing in Nashville, but uh, I'm, from from what I understand, you go to hot chicken restaurants and it is incredibly hot. It like, is. Okay. More hot than your coffee. It should be, doing. yeah. It's, it could be a little too hot sometimes. That's true. I, I, I wanted to do a show, though, where we mimic the show Hot Ones. Have you guys ever seen that? Yeah. Where you just go through, like, uh, uh, wings from, they call it the Scoville scale, so they'll typically start around 50,000, and then they'll end up with the Hot Ones is 2 million on the Scoville scale. I actually have a board game, the Hot Ones, so I have that 2 million Scoville Hot Ones over here. But I think that would be fun if we could, like, we couldn't do 10, because that'd be a lot of wine, but yeah. if we could do, like, 4 or 5, and then pair it with wine as we go up the Scoville scale to one of the one of the hot ones. That would be a hysterical eating on Eating on TV has never been easy, but uh, I'd be able to get it a shot. because you're just like, There's your nose the starts bomb. running. Is and the hot sauce? The, the bomb, bomb. yes. Yeah. I'm familiar with that one. Yeah. It's very hot. I was yeah, sweating. Really I was hot. eating napkins, drinking mm -hmm. milk. Yeah. you got to drink the milk. People forget that. you got to drink the milk. That's right. Don't drink water. No. Milk. No, no, no. Or bread. No, Avi's a great guest. He's a great friend. Uh, we Care Computers donated a bunch of computers to uh, students that needed uh, computers for online learning. He's a great person. We Care Computers. Matt Whitney, we talked about. Doug Rankin, we talked about. I, Mike Isco. Mike Isco's on the board. He's a, a podcast guest. He's on the board of the West Hartford Community Interactive. I think he'd be a great guest. Len Diana is a, a guest. He does uh, wine. He does the wine trail for the passports? Yes. So you ever do I, that? Was, I was very active on the wine trail early on when it first started, when we only had a few vineyards. I, I, were you doing it early on, back in the early 2000s? I've tried, but I, I don't think I've ever gotten more than about five or six in. Yeah, so it, it was, don't get me wrong, every vineyard in Connecticut is beautiful. I mean, it's a small state, but our vineyards in this state are really beautiful. Just you, you have to go in there. Once again, we haven't done a lot of, we've never done any Connecticut wine shows. It's, in general, Connecticut vineyards can import grapes from California. So you can have a percentage of grapes that are not all Connecticut grown. And I don't think it's a fair representation to do a, a, a fair tasting of Connecticut wines on the show. Because we're going to be honest. I think we're, we don't lie about the wine if we like them or we don't like oh, them. Oh, we'll give it a thumbs down. Well, sure. Yeah, and I'm not going to do that to Connecticut Vineyard because I, I respect what they're doing. And I think the, the venues there are really nice. And some vineyards are very nice. I think the wines are very good. And uh, that's just, like I said, I think if people should check out Connecticut Vineyard. It's a great day experience. It's a great way to taste different wines. Um, but we don't do it on the show because I'm not going to dog a, a wine that I don't like just because it's from Connecticut. So, But the settings themselves are beautiful. No, I learned, so, again, lifelong learner. I learned so much. I got to know you guys. You guys are doing a great thing. Friends of Feeney, uh, you know, our Feeney Talks with Friends. We talk to wonderful people in the community. So you guys have been in the community doing great things with this podcast. Lots of fun. I enjoyed it. I learned a lot. Um, so... Anything else? I'm gonna. We did 50 minutes with Feeney. We did 50 minutes with Feeney, That's and okay. uh, I thought the show went by fast. Well, we got to say, 23 minutes. Uh, who, 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 who had doing a long one show? It was wonderful talking with you guys. You guys are awesome. I had so much fun. Could we say be a good friend on three? Sure can. One, two, three. Be, be a good, good friend. friend. And as always, keep Eric. Keep me. Keep Rocky. All of us in your wine cellar. cellar.